The year is 2045, and you are a games artist working for the world's largest gaming company, Ubisoft. And you have been tasked to create all of the environment textures for their latest NFT open world adventure game, Big Chunk is 7. First off, congratulations on the promotion. Secondly, you're screwed because you need to create over 200 different rock texture variations in less than a week. And it would take months to create all of those textures by hand like you normally do. So how are you possibly going to create all of these textures with so much variety in such a short amount of time? The answer is with something called procedural texturing. Put simply, procedural textures are just 2D images that are generated using an algorithm that contain different information about the nature of your material, such as its color, how shiny it is, how bumpy the surface is, and many other details. On top of having lower storage costs, unlimited resolution, and really easy texture mapping, what really makes procedural textures so powerful is the flexibility and ability to reuse your textures in infinite ways. Meaning, once you've created a procedural texture, you are able to quickly change its parameters and modify the texture however you see fit, perfect for creating 200 rocks in under a week. For example, using a procedural generation software like Substance Designer or Blender, we can create a brick wall and dynamically change anything we want on the fly. We could specify the color, size, shape, and the frequency of the bricks, as well as the number of rows and columns of your brick material. You can also add noise textures to break up shapes and add color variation where there weren't any before. Having the ability to go back at any point in your material creation process and change parameters is what we call a non-destructive workflow. For example, say you're creating a wood texture on a single layer in Photoshop. If you were to make a mistake early on in your texture that you've missed, you would have to destroy all of your previous work to erase the mistake and start again from scratch. But with a non-destructive material, fixing a wood texture is just a simple matter of tweaking your parameters, and then your software will do all of the calculations to adjust the texture to your liking without ruining the rest of your material. In most cases, this process is just completed in milliseconds. We can take procedural textures even further by feeding our software information about the mesh that they're attached to to create a custom material using a process called baking. This baking process generates 2D images called mesh maps. Mesh maps can be used to give more information related to the mesh geometry and enhance the look of materials. Many filters and materials adapt to the geometry of a 3D mesh by looking at these baked textures. For example, baking can provide information about ambient shadows, where the edges of geometry lie, or even how thick an area of the mesh is. Substance Painter is a really great example of a software that utilizes mesh maps. For example, you're making an old car, and this old car may have rust applied at its bottom because it hasn't moved in a while. When you bake the position map, this allows painters' filters and generators to know where the bottom of the mesh is. When the filters and generators have this extra information, they can create effects that use the geometry of the mesh to appear more realistically. Or back to our original rock example. Instead of having to manually paint edgeware into every single rock, you can just use the mesh's curvature map to identify the sharper edges of your material and dynamically add edgeware to only those parts creating textures unique to that specific rock without ever having to pick up a paintbrush. So yeah, procedural textures are pretty cool.